A lot of people want to know the secrets of how to put on muscles, whether you have diabetes or not. I'm going to tell you all about it. Straight into the topic. A lot of people, they struggle to put on muscles or weight. A lot of people with diabetes struggle even more. Why? Because diabetes is normally a catabolic condition and a lot of people lack the, uh, the knowledge or the, um, the mentoring of how to adjust your diabetes or control your diabetes to be able to achieve that specific goal. So first, before getting into gaining weight or gaining muscle, because it will be the same for a person with diabetes and the person without diabetes, let's first understand what you need to do as a person with diabetes. But rest assured that this video will apply to anyone that have diabetes or don't have diabetes, because all the tips that I'm gonna give, they will apply for both. So as I always say in all my videos, all my articles, anything that I uh, upload, is that we got a priority. I think people are bored from this part. I have to say it every time. Our priority as people with diabetes is to keep our blood sugar levels in range. This is the main priority, regardless of what your goal is. Why? Because the only difference between someone that have diabetes and someone that don't is the controlled blood sugar levels. So whether it's type one, type two, all the other types, there is a, a lack of insulin in our system or there is insulin resistance that both of them results in unstable blood sugar levels. So our main priority is to get our blood sugars in range here in the UK it's from 4 to 8 millimole per liter um, um, to be able to for our body to be able to be working and treated as a body without diabetes. Get that straight in your head. Okay why does uncontrolled blood sugar levels affect you? Think about it this way. If you go hyperglycemic, which is high blood sugar levels, which is above the normal range, your body gets into a catabolic state. If you remember when you got diagnosed, uh, or just before you get diagnosed, how much weight you lost, or how badly dehydrated you were, this was because your body, the, cell, the, the, the glucose in the bloodstream is not absorbed by the body cells, so your body breaks the content inside, so breaks the fats, transforms it to ketones. And that's why you keep on shrinking, shrinking, losing weight. So if you want to build muscles, it's a no-brainer that you want to avoid going hyperglycemic. Same with hypoglycemia. If you go hypoglycemic a lot, which is low blood sugar levels, um, you're going to start treating yourself eating sugar. Depending on your diet, I'm not sure all the diets will have, you know, simple sugars all day. Um, you might ruin your diet and instead of getting muscles you might end up getting fat. So it's a no-brainer to try all the time to get your blood sugar levels in range. Now you go hypo or you go hyper is it the end of the world? No it isn't. I myself I don't have the perfect control. Um, any person without diabetes if you look at their blood sugar levels it's never a straight line just to let you know it's always a zigzag but it is a zigzag within range so if, if someone that doesn't have diabetes, they eat a meal that's, that has a lot of carbs, they will have a, a spike in their blood sugar levels, but it's going to be within range. Our only issue is it's not in range. So if we don't make sure that that spike ends where, you know, it's eight or 10 or whatever you, you, you want your target to be is, um, you're going to go hyperglycine. So what I'm saying is it's not the end of the world. I go hypo, I go hyper a lot. But don't ever think, oh, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm, I can't be bothered to treat the hypo. Oh, I'm going hypo, I'm gonna wait for a bit to, you know, to, uh, to get more hypo, maybe it's gonna fix itself. No, um, my slogan all the time is to prevent, not treat. And this is how uh, you're gonna get better. One more diabetes related question that I wanna put in, because I get asked that a lot, is, is it harder to put on muscles having diabetes? Yes, it is harder because of what I just mentioned, um, diabetes is a catabolic state. So if you see someone, um, uh, you know, pointing at you and telling you, oh, you're, you're big because you take insulin, it doesn't work with diabetes like that. A lot of people, a lot of bodybuilders, they take insulin, even though they don't have diabetes, because, you know, insulin works on absorbing the nutrients in the bloodstream and 
flushing it, putting it into the body cells. So it makes use of all the nutrients that you eat. So it's a good thing. But with us, um, we have a lot of other um, issues. We have um, the hyper hypoglycemia that I told you about. We've got something called glycation, glycation where your um, the glucose, um, you know, uh, kind of centers itself around joints or around muscles or around. That's if you have frequent high blood sugar levels, um, and it causes aching, it causes pain, it, goes, it causes dry joints. There's a lot of stuff. So diabetes is never an advantage or a benefit to put on muscles, but it's possible. There are challenges, but it's up to you how you want to face the challenges. You want to give up to it or you want to, you know, uh, define the odds. And in my opinion, it's not even defined the odds. In my opinion, I think if you don't have any other condition that would prevent you from training or eating properly, um, and it's only diabetes, I think it's the norm. It's the normal to have a controlled blood sugar level. Not, not normal to have controlled blood sugar, but you should be working on having controlled blood sugar levels and you should live your life to the fullest. So in terms of managing your diabetes, I posted a lot about this already. So I'm gonna move forward now with how to put on muscles with the training and a diet. So simply to put on muscles, you need to put your body into hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is the type of exercising that would result in increased muscle mass. Now, you might have heard a lot that when you train, you actually damage the muscle and then the muscle recovers itself and gets bigger. By the way, this is true and this is exactly what happens. To build muscles through exercising, you need to have both mechanical damage and metabolic fatigue. Let me explain this now. Now, think about lifting heavy weights. When you're doing a resistance exercise, the proteins and the muscles, they must produce the force to be able to lift that specific weight. And that's why it's called resistance. The, your muscles is resisting that weight. And this is how you get your muscles damaged. This is how you get the structure damage in the muscles itself. So now your muscle is damaged. How is that any beneficial? When you do a mechanical damage, it stimulates a, a repair response to the muscles itself. So when you're damaging the muscle structurally, um, you're also repairing it. You're also working on recovering that muscle. So how does the body repair itself or um, why would it get bigger? Now, this is dependent on the nutrition that you're going to have. So it's not just training. Um, if you're not having enough protein or carbs or whatever nutrients, we're going to get to this in a bit, to fuel that muscle to be able to recover, it's not going to get bigger. So both mechanical damage and metabolic fatigue are important to achieve the muscle hypertrophy that I just explained. Now, this is a lot of science. Now, let me translate it to, practical, to practicality. If you're training, okay, and uh, you think that you are going to gain weight or you're going to tone your body doing uh, a cardiovascular exercise, for example, uh, in most cases, not. In most cases, you're actually going to lose a lot of weight. You might lose a lot of fat, you might lose a lot of muscles. Again, this is dependent on your diet. But um, if you want to gain muscles, you have to work on uh, high reps, uh, heavy weight. And by heavy weight, I don't mean, oh, go do a one rep max deadlift. No, no I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about, let's say now you are going to do a, an arm, a bicep curl, for example. Um, you did 10 reps and then you can do 11. Do you stop at 10? No, I want you to fatigue the muscle. This is where the fatigue is coming from. It's good to train the muscle till failure. Okay, how about um, the program? So now, now you know that whatever exercise you do, you need to push yourself to the limit. What about the program? Uh, which program should you follow? It's dependent on your goal. It's dependent on your um, experience. Depending on uh, your condition, you might have injuries. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. There's upper, lower. There is uh, each body part in, in one specific day. Uh, there's pull, push. There is plenty, plenty, plenty of programs. And uh, you shouldn't be putting it for yourself. You should be consulting a, a trainer, a professional trainer, to put it for you because it's going to be a shortcut. So now, the simple answer of how do I gain muscles, again, having diabetes or not, is by doing resistant exercises and going beyond your limits, okay? You have to get out of your comfort zone, okay? You can still achieve, by the way, if you're, if you're doing, you know, the, the, the kind of um, uh, medium intensity workouts, um, but if you, wanna, if you want something, then go all in, go hard. So um, resistant exercises, um, do as much 
uh, you try to fatigue the muscles, or not as much as you can, as in go and do 10 sets of one exercise. That's that's not what I mean. But try to fatigue the muscle, try to go heavy. So um, heavy weights is proven uh, to uh, increase the hypertrophy and also to increase the strength. I mean, the stronger you get, it's, it's like a cycle. Um, you lift heavier, you get stronger. It means that you can lift heavier. It means that better hypertrophy. It means that your muscle are getting stronger and it's just a never ending cycle. So training wise, root for resistance exercises. Don't neglect your cardiovascular exercises because you're gonna, if you, depending on your diet, you might end up uh, gaining weight in terms of fat. Remember, gaining or losing weight is such a generic term. It doesn't mean if you gain weight, it doesn't mean that you're gaining muscles, you might be gaining fat. If you're losing weight, it doesn't mean that you're losing fat, you might be losing water. So um, there is a lot to consider. A very important point for people with diabetes though is you need to understand the effect of exercises on your blood sugar levels. So not all exercises will drop your blood sugar levels. Some of them will elevate. It depends on how stressful or how intense the exercise is. I'm going to cover that in a different video because that does need a whole video to talk about. So now someone comes to me and tell me that, um, okay, I, I'm training so hard. I'm doing heavy weights, high reps, and uh, I'm still, my muscles are not growing. Now you have a problem with your diet, mate. Think about it. You're training so hard, your muscles are getting damaged and all what I just mentioned before. If you're not giving your body the protein required, the carbs required to work on recovering and replenishing the whatever you lost during that uh, session. Remember, when you're training hard, you're uh, losing muscle glycogen, you're using it. So you need to replenish it. This is if you are working on gaining weight. Uh, you definitely need your, a lot of protein. You need a lot of carbs. Who decides the amount? A nutritionist or your trainer okay don't go by what you see online what works for you doesn't work for me doesn't work for you know anyone um, any plan that needs to be put for you needs to be bespoke to your condition your experience your history um, your target your stats your gender as well so there is a lot to consider and don't ever ever you know you've got only one body um, don't ever uh, become greedy or what I mean is invest in yourself that's what I'm trying to say so if you're in a gym and there are personal trainers around and they obviously that's their job they're gonna charge you to train you then go ahead if you can afford it then go ahead it's your body it's your health um, it's a shortcut so basically if you if you google oh how to build muscles or how or, or free diet plans or something like that you will get a lot of stuff but it might not work and most probably it's not going to work for you and you're just going to be wasting your time so invest in yourself get the shortcut get a trainer or a nutritionist to put these stuff for you so talking a tiny bit about nutrition because i'm going to make another video about that because the video is very long already yeah that's very long um you to gain weight there is an equation that everyone knows to gain weight you need to be in a calorie surplus our body is a machine okay so um, an energy cannot be created or destroyed. So if you're eating energy, okay, calories are energy. If you're eating it, it needs to go somewhere. You're either using it or you're storing it. Storing it as fat, muscle glycogen, whatever, or you're using it to fuel the body to do the activity. So now you are um, exercising hard and you're on a very high calorie diet, but still you're not gaining muscles. You are gaining weight, you're gaining fat. This is the biggest mistake that a lot of people fall into. It's not only about calories. You see, if you're talking about weight, then it is about calories. But as I just mentioned, weight is a very generic term. It could be muscles, it could be water, it could be fat, it could be a lot of stuff. If you want to gain muscles and keeping fat gain to minimum or maintaining your fat or even losing fat, and it's possible, by the way, to gain muscles and lose fat. And I've done it a lot of times and I've done it with my clients a lot of times. Um, uh, you need to understand the mic, mic, uh, blah, blah, the macronutrients, right? You need to understand how much carbs, how much protein, how much fat you need per day, not how much calories. What are calories? Calories are made of these macronutrients. So simplest example, today I'm going to go have a double cheeseburger that has, let's say, a thousand calories. Tomorrow, I'm gonna have a, um, a big plate of rice, uh, a lot of chicken breasts, a lot of broccoli, clean food. Do you really think, and, and that plate has got a 1,000 calories, do you really think that the effect of that meal will be the same? 
as the other one? Definitely not. Definitely not. So you need to think macronutrients. I mentioned it like three times, but I'm going to say it again. Obviously, I can't give you a diet plan on this video because as I said, everyone is different. And also um, it takes time. You know, a professional trainer would, or a nutritionist, they would actually invest a lot of time making a diet plan for someone. So sorry for making this video very long, but uh, the summary of it is if you want to train, you know what to do now, you know how to train. Um, if you want to diet, um, you know how to think. Don't only think calories, think, think macronutrients. Um, and I will be making a lot of other videos about how to avoid hypos during or before exercise, how to avoid hypers, dawn phenomena, factors that would affect your diabetes and so on. Can't get all that in one video. But yeah, I hope this uh, video helped and enlightened you. And if you have, if you think I should mention um, kind of like a question regarding that same topic, just put it in a comment and I'll see if I can fit it in. Um, if I didn't answer that already. Take care. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm going to make a very important video about how to choose a trainer, uh, whether it's a physical trainer or an online trainer, because a lot of people, they get fooled by images and, you know, these before and after pics and so on. So I'm going to help you out with that.